Hello guys, in this video we are going to create a digital clock from scratch using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So this is the clock we are going to be building. So as you can see it updates every few seconds. We have this gradient border. It also have a little bit of glowing effect. This is a simple project that we are going to build. I hope you are excited for this. So let's not waste any time. Subscribe now if you haven't already and let's get started. Okay, so let's start by creating our index.html and a style.css. And finally a main.js and in the index.html we are going to create a basic markup by typing exclamation mark tab and now let's link our style sheet so we are going to say link it will be style.css and we are going to add our javascript file also so we are going to say script source equals to main.js like so let's open it up with our live server. So here is our empty page. So here I'm going to create a div with a class of clock. So inside that, for now let's just add some dummy text. So for example, we can say 12 colon let's say 23 colon 01, and we're going to say pm. And here is our text. So let's center it. So in the style sheet, we're going to first say everything. So asterisk to have a margin of zero and padding of zero. So margin zero and a padding. Of also zero and then we're going to say our body our body will have a display of flex we're going to say display of flex and we're going to say justify content to center and align items to also center save it it is centered horizontally but not vertically so we're going to say HTML and our body both of them to have a height of 100% save it and now it is fully centered Okay, let's give our body a dark background color. So we're going to say background color equals to let's choose any color and change it to some dark color. And yeah, this should be good enough. Now let's target our clock. So it it has a class of clock. So let's say this should have a padding of one em so that we can see it better. Let's give it a background color of white. So we're going to say hashtag fff save so this is how this looks like let's also give it some border radius so we're going to say border radius of let's say 5 pixel this should be good enough and then we're going to say font family so font family i'm going to use Arial, but you can choose any font you want i'm also going to say font weight to be bold so font weight to be bold we can also say font size to be a bit bigger so we're going to say font size Let's say 1.2 em. Let's try 2 em. And yeah, 2 em would be better. And let's reduce the padding a bit so we can see instead of 1 em, we can try 0.75 em. And now we want to create that gradient border. So we can use gradient for our border color. That is why we are going to use a trick. We are going to use the before pseudo elements. So we are going to say dot clock. And we're, then we are going to say dot colon colon before. And it will have a content of nothing. So we're going to say content equals to an empty string. We're also going to say this will have a display of block. And the width and height will be 100%. So we're going to say width of 100%. And the height can also be 100%. And so that we can see it, let's also give it a background color. So background color of for now, let's just say red, save. And we can't see it. So let's say our clock will have a position of relative so position relative and our clocks before element will have a position of absolute so we're going to say position absolute and we're going to say top zero and the left will also be zero save this is above our clock we want this to be below our clock so for that we're going to say z index so z dash index equals to negative one save and now it is below our clock let's make it slightly bigger than our clock so we can say 110% and 110% save. So this is just a little bit bigger than our clock. So here we can also say the top to be let's say negative 5% and the left will also be negative 5% save. And this is how this looks like. Actually let's increase the height. So let's say 20%, 120% and then we're going to say top to negative 10% save. And this is how this looks like. Okay now we are also going to say the border radius to be 5 pixels so we're going to say border radius 5 pixel and then instead of just background color of red we're going to use a gradient color here so we're going to say background color 
actually background image we we have to use background image if you want linear color so we're going to say linear gradient and let's choose some color here so for now let's just say red green and blue save and this is how this looks like let's change the directions let's say 45 degree or let's say 135 degree like so okay now let's change our color to some colors that we we would like so let's let me change the color real quick and i have chose this color this looks good to me i'm also going to reduce the width so let me go to the css and here instead of saying 110 percent let's say 108 percent maybe so 108 so then here instead of 5 we're going to say negative 4 save and this looks a bit better in my opinion now we also want this to glow so for that i'm going to simply say the before and after to have the same thing so we're going to say dot col clock colon colon after So here the before and after both are stacked but we can see them individually so let's just target our after element so after control C if we paste it so control V and if we were to say let's say something like border to be one pixel solid red so one pixel solid red and now we can we have this little bit of border let me increase it so let's say 10 pixels so as you can see here is our border so instead of border we're simply going to say filter and we are going to use the blur filter and let's say 5 pixel and so now we have this little bit of glowing effect ok for the background color let's change the background color to the color we have in our body so let me copy this ctrl c and we are going to paste it instead of white we will have this black background color save and this is how this looks like so for the text I am also going to have this same background color so let me copy this ctrl c if we were to say something like color equals to linear gradient and save it as you can see it does not work so we have to going to, we are going to have to use background color so we are going to say background color actually background image sorry since we are using the linear gradient so background image equals to the linear gradient that we have and let me remove this save and this is how this looks like but this is not how we want this to look we just want the text to be in the gradient so for that we are going to say color to be transparent so color to be transparent and then we are going to say background clip to be text so background dash clip and this will be text and then we are also going to say dash webkit dash background clip to text for better browser compatibility save it and now we can see the text that is because the text has a linear background color but the clock also have this linear background color so I am going to wrap the text inside a span so let us go to the index.html and let's wrap it inside a span so control x span tab and here we're going to paste the text save so now what we can do is say clock control c and paste it control v and then target the span inside that and the span will have this background so let me cut this so control x and then we're going to paste it so control v save so now as you can see our text have this gradient and so now we just have to update the time every second in our javascript so let's do that so let's target our clock in our javascript so copy this so we're going to say const clock so const clock equals to document dot query selector let me close my sidebar so control b and i'm going to say we're targeting the clock and the span inside that since, since the span is what contains the text and then we're going to create a function so we're going to say function and we're going to call it update clock and then inside that function we're going to create a new date object now equals to new date and then we can get the hours by saying const hours equals to now dot get hours like so we can also get that minute and seconds like so and then for now let's just console log them so we're going to say console dot log save it and now if we now inspect and call that call that update function so well, let's call it update clock as you can see it gives us the current hour current minute and seconds which matches the clock here okay now if it is just a single number like for example 8 we have to add a 0 in front of it so here instead of saying just hour we are going to say if hour is greater than 9 actually so if it is greater than 9 that means the hour is a two digit numbers in that case we can simply say hour hours so hours otherwise we are going to say 0 so we are adding a 0 and then plus hours ok this should be a question mark sorry 
save so as you can see now we have a zero in front of our hour so let's do the same for minute and second so we're going to say actually let's just copy this control c and paste it control v instead of hour we're going to say minute so and finally let's do it for the second as well save it and now as you can see this still works the same but now if our num our minute or second is single digit number we'll get zero in front of it now we need to know if it is am or pm so let's create a variable also so let's say const let's just call it am underscore pm equals to here we are going to say if hour is greater than or equals to 12 in that case it is pm otherwise it is am so we can also say that here also so here we are going to say dollar sign inside the curly brace we are going to say am underscore pm save it and now it says am so instead of console logging we are simply have to going to have to say clock dot inner text so clock dot inner text equals to and we can remove this parenthesis we don't need them and now it says 8 colon 23 colon 45 so this is displaying our time so we now we just want our time to be updated in every second so for that we're simply going to have to say set interval so set interval let's say we, we want this function to run every 100 second 100 milliseconds so here we're simply going to have to say update clock so update clock like so as you can see our time is updating every 10 milliseconds okay let's wait for this to get become 60 so after that this will become 25 then we'll know everything is working and there it has become 25 so we have successfully created a digital clock from scratch using javascript i hope you enjoyed this video if so don't forget to toss a like subscribe for more videos just like this and i will see you next time